Okay, it was the 19th of March this year, and it was only a few days until a launch of a major uh, membership site that I'd been working on for what seemed to be forever, for a not-for-profit. Now that project was one of those projects that it wasn't so much as a scope creep, as a scope gallop with the hounds of hell after it. I was really looking forward to launch when the first email pinged in my inbox. Excuse me. Ping. Uptime robot. Okay, commercial air conditioning site is down. And that site, and that site, and that site. For those of you who don't know, Uptime Robot is a really cool free tool. And you can set it to ping your site periodically just to tell you whether the site's up or down. So Uptime Robot sent the first alert for me. Okay. All of those sites are with never to be named hosting. <laughs> Let me discuss never to be named hosting. Never to be named hosting is a small Brisbane um, IT company that have their own servers based in Brisbane and they were my hosting company. I'd been with them for years. So I'd started originally as a copywriter and then morphed into web design, as a lot of us do. And over the years, as I grew, never to be named hosting were my business partners. Um, they had this amazing help desk guy, Matthew. Matthew had my back for everything. The phone, if I had an issue, I'd call and Matthew would sort it. Had a problem, I'd drop an email to him, Matthew would sort it. Everything was perfect until Matthew left. And then suddenly, never to be named hosting, got on the nose. It had got so bad that three weeks before, I'd actually gone and had a meeting with the CEO. Now, listen, I want to talk to you about your help desk. We have a bit of a problem. I'll send an email and you, you, they're not answering me. It can take three weeks to get an acknowledgement. I ring and the phone just rings out. But I really want to talk to you about the, your server, the, like Web Server 4. Most of my clients are on that Web Server 4 and it's running an ancient version of SQL, MySQL. And look, it's so bad, I can't even spin up a help, you know, spin up a testing site. What are we going to do about it? Yeah, mate, I had trouble with staff the last couple of months, you know. Um, and it's a, it's a legacy server, mate. Um, you know what it's like. It's so much painful to sort of to update things. But yeah, look, leave it with us, mate. You can trust us. We'll get it sorted for you. OK, not a problem, I thought. Uptime robot, sites are back up. Fantastic. I thought, it must be looking, it must be finally doing some work on the server. Uptime robot. Sites are back down again. Right, OK. But then I also had another email from the not-for-profit client. Hey, want to expand the scope and still keep the actual launch date in two days' time? Can we do that? <laughs> Fine, I can do this. Patted the cat who was sitting in my in-tray. Uptime robot. OK, sites are back up. Brilliant. Uptime robot. Sites are back down. Uptime robot, sites are back up, up, down. It felt like a 1970s aerobics class. Uptime robot, up, down, up, down. It was actually getting worse. It was like an all-you-can-eat curry night at the local pub and the toilet seat was going up and down and up and down. Okay, this is a bit of a worry. So I've dropped an email to all of the clients who are in the uptime robot alerts. Just letting you know, guys, we have a bit of instability at the moment with your sites. It's all good. I got it under control. I'll be chasing it for you. See, I've learned over the years that it's always better to be the bearer of bad news than to be at the receiving end of a client yelling at you. I also sent a note to Never To Be Named Hosting. Dear Never To Be Named Hosting, have a bit of instability on that web server for we were talking about before. Anything I should know about? Nothing. Up, down, up, down, up, down. I left it for the night. Finally, nine o'clock at night, I just gave up and went back to bed. That was it. And I thought, okay, I'll have a look at it in the morning. Morning came and all the sites appeared to be stable. Put the air conditioning site into the browser, site was up. Two thumbs up, I thought I can finally deal with this not-for-profit yet again expansion of their project. Well, I was trying to find words that didn't have swear words in them as I was responding, but you get the idea. So I spent the day just dealing with that not-for-profit site. I thought, tomorrow, tomorrow's gonna be the day. I'll have a look at all of those sites. Next day came, and I tried to log in to the air conditioning site. Okay, 
Slight problem. Oop, go back a bit. Slight problem. Username and password not recognised. Interesting, I had WordFence installed. Maybe there was a problem there. It was a paid version of WordFence. Okay, I'll just send a note to never to be named hosting. Dear never to be named hosting, seems to have had some problem. Can you just reset the password on the commercial air conditioning site? And have a look in the front end, because we had that instability. Ping, for once they answered. Woohoo, two thumbs up for me. Yes, not a problem. Here's your new password. Site looks fabulous. Okay, cool. I can do this. Log into the commercial air conditioning site, having a look. Don't recognise any of those usernames. Let's have a look at WordFence. WordFence, absolutely nothing. Everything's clean as a whistle. The only lockout was me. Okay, that's interesting. But it's clean. Hmm. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just log into Plesk and have a look at this back end. Logging into Plesk, having a look at the files. I have no idea what I'm looking for. Let's just pretend I know what I'm doing. Let's have a look at the files. Let's see if there's anything that stands out. Okay, there's a file I don't normally install in commercial air conditioning. HTML. <laughs> Yay, I think that might mean that they're hacked. Two thumbs up, I spotted it. Oh dear. If the commercial air conditioning site's been hacked, um, what about the other sites that are on that server? <sighs> breathe, breathe. Logging in, HTML. Logging in, HTML. Logging in, HTML. HTML. Excuse my language, but that's what the files were called. <laughs> Every single site on Web4 had been hacked. That was 80% of my clients from the last five years were on that server, and every single one of them had been hacked. I can do this, I can do this. I now know that it's been hacked. I'll go and check into WordFence. I'll do a deep scan because every one of them had the paid version of WordFence. Let's do a deep scan, deep scan, clean. Okay. I'll go to SecureEye. I'll run a deep scan with SecureEye, see if that's picked up something, because that'll fix it. Deep scan, deep scan. OK, they're not picking up anything. There's nothing in Google Search Console. Everything says it's clean. But we know it's got a HTML site. Not a problem. Not a problem. I can, I can, I'll just do the backups, restore from the backups. You see, I used Updraft Plus, and I, back up, I did back up to Updraft Plus Vault and I always stored 30 days of backups. Fantastic, logging in, I can just do a restore, logging in, updraft plus, have a look at these log, okay. Where did all my backups go? They were there the day before yesterday. Shit, the hackers had deleted every one of my backups from Vault. Now what happens with Vault is when someone deletes from Vault, it's gone forever. All my backups are gone. I can't do any restores for any of those sites. Okay. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Ah! I can cope, I can cope. I'll just send a note to never to be named hosting. Never to be named hosting. Just letting you know that the hack was real and all of the sites were hacked. Can you please restore from two days prior to the hack? Ping. Dear Ingrid, yes, happy to restore from your two days before your backups for you. Only trouble is it's going to cost you $570 plus GST per site per restore. Let's go back to there. That was me. Drinking a lot more. But oh my God, $570 plus GST plus restore for all of my clients for the last five years. Right, right. What would any other web designer do besides a lot of swearing? Google, what do you do when your WordPress website is hacked? <laughs> so, what I did was started off with a quick repair, much like a, a boarding up a broken window. I started with a commercial air conditioning site and I deleted all of the users that weren't me. And I set up a new user, me, because I didn't trust anybody, and deleted everybody. 
I changed the passwords into hosting. I changed the salt keys and the WP config file just to log out everybody who wasn't there. I changed the WordPress database passwords and I ran high sensitivity scans on WordFence. Everything was still clean. Five minutes later, I was locked out again. Usernames were changed one more time. They had a back door into the site. Okay. Determined to d jump ahead. So then what I do? I then said, okay, okay, I can deal with this, I can deal with this. Let's start with triage. I went through and created a list of every single client that I'd sent to Never To Be Named Hosting over the last five years. I looked at who were on maintenance plans with me and who weren't on maintenance plans. I looked at my contracts with each of them to see what I'd actually said as to who would pay for hack repairs. While I had great contracts, they're a little bit grey. So I actually rang my lawyer as well and said, hey, let's have a chat about these contracts. What does it actually say? I also rang my professional indemnity insurer just to try and see what they would say, just saying, hey, we might have a problem checked everybody's contact details, and I checked to see which of my clients were going to be affected by the mandatory disclosure of data requirements, or data breaches. Now, if you're a web designer, a web developer, and you've got a number of clients, you need to know that. You need to know who has to, what you have to do in case there is a breach under the mandatory um, reporting of data, mandatory disclosure of data requirements. Luckily, nobody on that server was caught up by the reporting. If it was another server, we would have been in a whole world more of pain. Okay, I had my triage. I knew who was affected, and I knew what we had to do. Things when I was talking to the lawyer, though, they said, um, here's a heads up, Ingrid. You recommended never to be named hosting to your clients. You said, hey, when we build a site, we build with never to be named hosting, and you set them up. Yes, the thing was in the client's name, they took out the individual accounts, but you only recommended one person. Guess what? You are partially liable. So all web designers, have a wee chat to your lawyers and check if you only name one host, similar to me, and there's a dirty great hack, you may also be liable. Something to have a think about. So I decided that what I was going to do was wear the cost of all of the hack remediations for every one of my clients. The only costs I would pass on was any new hosting costs, and if there was a specialist that, that was beyond the scope of our agency. So what can you do if you are hacked? Some hosts are lovely and they, have, they include hack repair like Kinster. Never to be known hosting wasn't like that. You can go to somewhere like Security, WordFence, SiteLock and they'll do a, site, uh, a, a clean for you. Works really well if you've got a couple of sites numbers really start to add up when you've got five years worth of hosting. You can hire a specialist hack repairer. What I did is, um, is I'm in a web support agent, a web group, a really good group called BlogAid. And BlogAid, the webmaster group, is probably my ultimate support network. They don't just teach you how to do web design, that's somewhere else. This is more about the techo stuff. And if you're new into, into web design, BlogAid webmaster group is a really useful one. So I've, logged a thing onto the Facebook group and said, hey, help, I need emotional support, calm me down, talk me out of a tree. And has anybody got any references for really good hack remediation specialists? And I also hired an external security auditor, put out a call for an external auditor just to do a double check once we'd got everything sorted. And I put together some recommendations. So I rang each one of my clients and I said, you've got three choices. You can either pay, the blood money to never to be named hosting. You can either get Sakurai WordFence or SiteLock to do it, here's the costs, or we've got a hack remediation specialist. And what did they choose? I'll, I'll tell you that in a minute. So what can you learn from this so far? Websites get hacked. It's a fact of life. At any given time, about 1% of all websites have malware. It's 18.6 million, roughly, websites at any given time have malware in it. Even the tiniest, tiniest website, the smallest little one, gets on average 62 hack attempts a day, per day. 
But what about WordPress? Well, 34% of all websites are driven by WordPress, are powered by WordPress. And about 60% of all content management sites use WordPress. So does that mean WordPress is bad? No. WordPress is bloody wonderful. The trouble is, hackers go where the money is. So if you think about pickpockets, if there's only me and Bill, and Bill's a pickpocket, and we're both staring at each other, he's not going to pick my pocket. But if there's a crowd, that's where the pickpockets go. All the pickpockets and all the hackers are doing are following where the crowd goes. So if you use WordPress, you're just a crowd. You're just in the crowd, and they're trying to get you. So what are some of the signs that your site has been hacked? We'll just cover that one first. Number one, if your site is hacked and they do a little jihadi thing, or suddenly there's people not wearing very much and they're very athletic and very noisy about it, your client is going to be the one who's going to spot it first, and they will ring you. Always, guaranteed, particularly the client you've spent ages wooing. You might get a particularly red shade from your browser from Chrome or Firefox, might tell you, hey, malicious site ahead. Your host might pull your site down. If they're nice, they'll give you a warning. If they're not nice, they'll take your site down faster than a kid who sees a puddle when they're trying to remove their clothes. Oh, gone. Google might flag that it's a deceptive site in searches. You might not be able to log in, similar to what we had. Google Search Console might give you a flag. Security, might, your plug-in might have an alert like your WordFence group. Unknown admins will appear. Just take it as one of your things to check in periodically to see who's the admin on your site. Random new files and pop-ups suddenly appear. You might suddenly find that your site is now uh, advertising uh, Viagra and other little benefits. Your site might take ages to load. When the hackers get in, they just shove so much stuff in that your site might take forever to load. So when we're talking about speedy sites, it might be this is actually contributing to it. Your site might be unstable, like we experienced. Your site might suddenly take up being a pen pal for it and four million of its friends around the world. If it starts sending email, you've got a problem. You might find that you've got extra pages and blog posts appearing, and you might suddenly find that you're strangely popular in places like Bulgaria, Brazil, Get over your ego, it's not you. It's probably that you've been hacked from somewhere along those sites. So when I rang my, my clients, the number one question they said was, but why me? I'm only a tiny little tradie. Why me? The reasons that sites get hacked, number one is usually political motives. We're finding that there's a lot of political-based hacking, and they're trying to spread their message to raise awareness, they're trying to bring your site into, for example, the DDoS bot. So they're conscripting you into their cyber army. That's the, most number, that's the number one reason that sites get hacked these days. Quite often, another reason is that they, they want to see, um, steal identity and use your, the identity of things in the back end for money. So yesterday, there were some speakers that were talking about things that you could do on WordPress that you didn't know. More details that you've got in the back, the more potential that you are for creating a lovely little honeypot for people to steal identity. They might want to skim credit card details if you've got an e-commerce site. So they're trying to do it for money. Theft of personal info, we talked a little bit about that. That's particularly important if you've got a medical type site. Theft of personal info is, is a very common um, reason for hacking, and just so you know that your personal details are worth $4.50 on the black market, so don't think that you're actually worth a lot of money, $4.50, and your details can be bought by the lowest bidder. Hobby or lulls, there's the odd person who still lives in their small little bedroom, not that many these days. To leak information, the Panama Papers was one of the biggest leaks in the world. 11 and a half million pa of, um, pages were, were leaked from this, this Panamanian law firm. It was hacked by an unpatched revolution slider, according to WordFence. You find that the um, people the, are trying to steal information and they're trying to get messages out. That's a common reason, the ex to expose people in governments. Cryptocurrency mining has dropped down in the last 12 months. We're seeing a lot less of that. But in the past, they used to just harness your website to try and um, access or to mine their cryptocurrency. To redirect to their porn sites is another reason. And SEO spam, to try and rank their sites higher, injecting their, all of their links 
back from your site. So there's some of the reasons that you get hacked. It's got nothing to do with you. It's got to do with your clients. It's got to do with your systems. And it's got to do with what you can do for the hackers. You're just the person in the middle. So let's have a chat about, well, how do you secure your website? OK. People forget that being online is actually like the real world. I'm just going to ask Bill, because he's just hand handy here. Just come and join me for a second, Bill. Now, Bill is a standard web designer. <laughs> he's wonderful. Now, Bill, I want you to think, think about your house at your home for a moment. Mm -hmm. Your home has got doors, I'm assuming? Most of the time, yeah. And your doors lock? Yes. And you lock your doors when you go out? You do. And you shut your windows? Mm -hmm. Okay, with your web, just your normal house, you shut your doors and your windows. You've got to do the same with your website. Now, with your keys at home for your front door, have you got less than five keys when you go out? Yes. Okay, and you know who owns, who's got those keys at all times? Exactly. Fantastic. Forgot to tell you, I actually took some of your keys yesterday and I had them cut. Hold that. Now, we're going to look at how many keys you've actually handed out on your website. And every time I ask about a key, I want you to drop it into my fishbowl. I'm a child of the 70s, so keys have got to go in fishbowls. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Have you got a theme on your website? You use Divi for memory. Drop in a key. Have you got a child theme? Probably. Do you have WordPress 20, 2019 running? Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Trouble with WordPress is it always brings its cousins. And when you have a look at them, so we've probably got 2018, 2017, 2016, and 2015. Fantastic. That's just your themes. Keys to your door. They're there. But you've got plugins. Every plugin is another key to your door. Yoast SEO, please. Thank you. Gravity Forms, please. And you've got an e-commerce site I think we were talking about. So can you add WooCommerce? But WooCommerce doesn't work unless you've got another five plugins, please. Wow. One, two, three. Fantastic. OK. Have you got a slider? Probably. Yeah, come on, chuck a couple more in. And if you're like most small business people, you've had a try of a couple of plugins and you haven't really use them for a while. Can you add another five, please? Can we have Hello Dolly? <laughs> it hasn't been deleted. Feeling secure? OK, but then your web designer added another couple that they didn't tell you about. They were just testing things. Yeah. This is your average website. These are the keys to your front door. You trust that every key is going to somewhere safe. The problem is, I forgot to tell you, you know one of those plugins that the web designer tried and just left? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened is the web designer went back and got a J-O-B and left their plugin in the repository and they abandoned it. It was just fine, except that this lovely Russian man went to them and said, I'm going to buy your plugin. I don't do accents. I'm going to buy your plugin. Um, and I promise not to add any malware or spyware to it. <laughs> And so the web designer sold their plugin to this person from with a lovely Russian accent. And this particular plugin is now full of spyware. And it's in your website. What I'm trying to say, thank you, Bill, you can, you can add, yeah, go on, add a few more. Yeah, why not? <laughs> every theme and every plugin that you have on your site is a key to your front door. So the basic rules. If you're not using it, delete it. If it's removed from the repository, delete it. And if it's something that's been abandoned, delete it. Each key, you need to know who's got the keys to your front door. OK. Next thing to secure your house. Who knows what these are? Let's move. It's a little kid's diary. If you're a mum, You've probably seen these. You give these to your children. And they've got these little tiny keys, and your child fills it full of important information like which of their friends farts and which teacher do they not like. Your username is another key to your front door. And unfortunately, a lot of people's key usernames and passwords are as secure as this. 
a website in, with WordPress, the default username is admin. If you have admin and the name of your website or one of the um, top 100 hacked passwords in the world, if you have password as your password, it'll take exactly zero seconds for the hackers to get in. If you have admin and you decide to be really strong and you've got the first name of your child and their date of birth, it takes 30.8 seconds. Feeling so strong and secure? Admin is as secure as this little tiny padlock and this little tiny key. First thing you do is get rid of all admin usernames. Get rid of manager, get rid of test, get rid of the name of your website as a username because that will increase the security. All of my clients had really complex usernames and passwords. They all had 16 character passwords that were multi had four factors of complexity. They had upper and lower case, they had numbers, they had symbols. A lot of them had dual factor and it wasn't enough. Okay, a few other things to do. Make sure that things are updated. According to SiteLock, 36.7% of hacked websites were running out of date versions of WordPress. 61% of hacked websites were running out of date versions of themes and plugins, according to WordFence. All of my clients' stuff was updated. I go in twice a week and manually update everything. I check. It used to be something you could do once a month, not anymore. I go in twice a week and check, update, and watch every single thing that we update to check to see that things are working and aren't breaking. And it wasn't enough. Back to this one. Just another thing while we're shutting the windows and shutting the doors, untick the little boxes at the very top to turn off pingbacks and trackbacks. These are primarily used in denial of service attacks quite often on your site. They can just belt the heck out of your site. It's just a little tiny thing, just untick it. Your ego doesn't need to have that stroke anymore. You might have a few years ago. These days you don't. So just untick it and it just helps to increase your security. It's just another window to shut. Make sure you've got quality hosting. Do your research. Now when I'm saying research, don't go to Facebook and say, hey, tell me a good host, because all you're going to do is get every single affiliate link under the sun. Do your research, ask other web designers, go outside and talk to all of the sponsors. You can't go wrong with most of our sponsors outside. When you're looking for a host, look for 24 seven support because if they're gonna hack, it's always at the stupid o'clock. And spread your risk. We've talked about that. Never just recommend one hosting company. For me now, I would never, ever, ever go for a small hosting company. For me, I will always go for multiple large companies and I always recommend minimum of two for my clients and let them make the choice from here on in. It's called spreading your risk. Never doing that again and let your, your clients choose. They've got to be the ones that make the final decision. Let's talk about PHP, another door to shut. One of the things that runs, powers WordPress is the PHP that runs on your site. Unfortunately, 74.7% .7 of all WordPress sites are either running unsupported versions of PHP, unsupported means no security patches, or 7.1. Now 7.1 reaches end of useful life, 1st of December this year. So if you haven't done it, update to 7.2, buggy as it is, or 7.3 and just hope like hell that your plugins work. But PHP is something that you've got to look at. It's more secure and it's faster. All of my clients were running 7.2, just as an aside. Another thing to shut, your WordPress table prefix. This is something when you're installing WordPress for the first time for your clients, just get rid of the WP table prefix, call it anything else. All you're trying to do is to break a common attack vector. It's a little tiny thing, takes two seconds on when you're doing the install, makes life easier. Some good security plugins will change that for you if it's done post install, and there are other plugins unavailable in the market that will help you do it. Just all you're doing is shutting doors. Gets back to this one. SSLs aren't just for your clients, your, security, your SSL certificate, they're also for you when you're logging into your admin. An SSL, all you're doing when you're logging into your admin is sticking your hand over an ATM and hiding the number that you're keying in. That's all it's doing. But it still gives you that little tiny bit of security. All of my clients had SSLs installed. Backup, 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 backup. In case you haven't heard this, backup. 
And as I said, I use Updraft Plus. I use the paid version of Updraft Plus. And as you can see, there's that little red column that says delete. That's what the hackers did. They just went down that little column, hit delete, 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 and boom, all my backups were gone. Updraft Plus has got some really funky things. If you go to the advanced tools section, there's a section where you can actually password protect it. I didn't do that before. So if you go to Updraft Plus and if you use it as a tool, make sure you lock down Updraft Plus. Put in a plugin or put in your password and lock it down. So if hackers get to it, they get to see that screen in future. Also with your backups, back them up somewhere that even if they are deleted, because it's easy enough to get around passwords, we all know that, go somewhere that you can get your stuff back. I used to back up to Updraft Plus Vault, don't anymore. Now I back up to Dropbox or Google Drive. Purely because if someone deletes it, I can always get it back now. It has its limits, but that's just one of the things that I can do. And do not rely on your hosting as the only source of your backups. A2, for example, recently, um, this year, they had ransomware. Fantastic, all of the sites got hit by ransomware, everybody got done, and all of the backups got hit by ransomware from A2. So all of the people who didn't, who were relying on their host to get the backup, got nothing. You need to have hosting backups and your own ones that you have control over and make sure that you have the capacity to get them back again. Okay, all we were doing the first stage was shutting the doors and the windows. Next thing we have to do is add a security alarm because the first one all we were doing is stopping the drive-by, he was flicking the door. Next thing you've got to do is add a security alarm to your website. Now I'm going to feel a lot more comfortable if we have Bill wearing our security alarm. I don't know about you, but every, every burglar alarm we have to have a, a nice safe. We feeling safer now? We've all got our burglar alarm? Stand up and show everybody how amazing you look. Every website needs a burglar alarm. Thank you. All a burglar alarm does is stand at the front door and says, you can come in, you, can, you cannot come in. It goes through the house, you're looking fabulous, goes through the house and looks to see if things are broken. That's a security plugin. Now there's lots of free and paid ones out there. WordFence, iTheme Security, All-in-One Security, SecureEye, SecureLock, all of those do something similar. They're going to look at the people coming in and they're going to monitor to see what was, um, what's happening to your site. Now with my stuff, I had paid WordFence on everything. It's the first thing I install on every site for one of my clients. I love WordFence, but. Now things that I had fixed on WordFence, I had things like hide my WP version, I disabled the code execution in the uploads directory, I had an alert that if anybody from admin from a different location logged in, didn't tell me anything. I had an alert set that it was gonna tell me if there's a large increase in attacks, nothing. I have immediate lockout if there's a wrong username or password for two months, nothing. I have it locked down so that anybody who um, tries to log in other than Australia can't log in. The page doesn't show, nothing. I have tight rules for bots, they're either blo blocked or delayed, I have country blocking, I have dual factor for a lot of my clients. Nothing has got triggered. Not one thing got triggered for my paid version of work. WordFence and any security alarm can lull you into a false sense of security. And I will still, to this day, install them on everything. But if a hacker can get and burrow through, it's no good. Okay, we need to add a wall. So you've got your security alarm in, fabulous security alarm. The next thing that we need to do to add security is to add a wall. So I, I was going to say, can we have a chance to build that wall, please? I know we're in the wrong country, but you know, you've got to have a wall. <coughs> We've got a wall for Bill. <laughs> We've got to have our, our wall. Feeling safer? Absolutely. But it's no good unless you actually have some, some sort of, um, some border security guards. My security domes from the International Spy Museum, so we'll add them to the collection. <laughs> Beautiful. So we've now got our lovely security alarm, we've got our fence, and we've got our border security guards. 
A wall or web application firewall helps stop the bad guys before they even get to your house. They're like the guy at the airport who scans your luggage before he even gets near the plane and says, hey mate, can't come any closer, which is what these security dudes are doing. And they're just stopping the people from getting close to your place. Now if you use Cloudflare, most people use the free version of Cloudflare. That's just a CDN, Content Distribution Network. It's great to stop you from denial of service. If you want a wall, you've got to pay for Cloudflare Pro. 20 bucks US a month, and it puts in that little wall for you. You can also have SecureEye. It's another thing that has the wall added to it. Adds another layer of security. Now I'll be honest, none of my clients had walls. And even now I can't sell a wall to my clients because they're tiny tradies. 20 bucks US a month is a big sell for them. I have it on my sites, but my clients it's a hard sell. Just something to be aware of that you can add a wall. You can also add in access security. So if you think about buildings, if you go into the Brisbane CBD, and I'm not going to read these out because it'll bore you to tears, if you go into the CBD and you go to a building, you get given an access pass that you beep yourself in to different places. And that lets you go to some places and not travel to other floors. You'll be able to get this slide when we do the downloads. These are all things that you can add to your WP config or your HT access files. Like every rule with text stuff, know how to do a backup of your HT access before you fiddle and know how to put it back when something breaks. Because guaranteed at least one of these will break your site. It's just all it's doing is saying, dear potential hackers, you can go here, but you can't go over here. You cannot touch these bits. You can't go wandering. Now some plugins, security plugins, will do these for you so you don't have to think of code. Other ones won't. It's just being really aware of what is actually in your code and what you're doing. And just know that some of these will break. If you use If This and That or Zapier, some of these will stop those from working. So you need to know, just try one thing at a time and just test your site constantly to see what's going to work. So you've got your wall and that will increase security on your site. Yep, go back there. And it still wasn't enough. I had basic security, I had paid word fence, and I had some of the access controls and it still wasn't enough. Doesn't matter what you do, if the hackers have a back door, they're going to hack into your site. Potentially, could have been the, the actual server. Remember we talked about that it was running a really ancient version of MySQL when I did a clean install after the hack. We got this alert so you can get to see how old it was. That even turned off the um, Auto update, we want that to be set to true. You never want it set to false. You always want it to be set to true. See, with websites, you're only as safe as your neighbours. If you've got good neighbours, you're safe. If you've got a dodgy one, not so good. Increases the risk of being hacked. So potentially it's the neighbours. Potentially it was shitty hosting. We don't really know to this day how the hackers kept getting in. The point is, it's what you do about it that matters. And the whole thing is, it's all about recovery. So the worst that happens, it's all about how you recover from the disaster. Your clients don't give a stuff who caused it, they just want it fixed. So for me, remember I talked about my, my clients and I gave them three options, blood money, secure AI or word fence, scan, or to have an external person to do an audit and then a migration. They all chose the third one, that none of them wanted to be with never to be named hosting again. And it took a couple of weeks to get everybody cleaned and migrated. But hacks have costs. So I had one client who was a small, uh, small um, car repair service yard. He lost 50% in sales for that month alone. We had two tiny, tiny clients who that was emotionally enough. So they actually closed the doors to their business. That was their last straw for them. They just shut the doors and left. For my side of things, I didn't lose a single client. Even the ones who actually closed their business, we still go for coffee now. And it was mainly because I think I was the emotional support for all of them. I rang every minute. I rang every night to tell them, hey, we've got a problem, let's fix it. I was there, because when someone's hacked, they feel like they've been burgled. It's the same emotional drama. 
And so I supported them through it. So the thing you've got to remember with WordPress security, you're trying to secure, you're trying to stop, you're trying to screen, hence our screen, and then you've got to help them recover at the end because that's what really matters as a WordPress um, security or a web developer. Okay, all I can say is thank you and I hope that none of you go through what I went through, but it was a good lesson. And I'm conscious of timing, so um, I don't know whether we'll have time for any questions. Do we have any questions? One question maybe? We can do one quick, quick, quick question. <laughs> yes. A question up there. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So as you mentioned um, a while ago, like most of like clients, especially those sort of startup, um, they cannot afford like monthly subscriptions and all that stuff for their security, right? So among all those um, websites, say for example, they're just like a brochure type websites, mm -hmm. like. What is your recommended, um, what do you call this, like plugins or the minimal um, things that we could install as a security for the website? So the minimum would be all of those things that I said to start with, the free ones like your keys. I still have WordFence paid, that's a non-negotiable, and every site that I do, and I build that into the cost build. Um, and then the main thing is I do the access control, I do all of the access control things because they're free. But they're my, they're my absolute bare minimum. And then backup, I always keep backups on backups on backups now. Yeah. Thank you very much. And I'd like to say thank you to Bill for being our wonderful security <laughs> support. Thank you. And please give a, a big thank you to Ingrid as well. Uh,